who you could be talking about. Uh, uh, first of all, why? you could totally do that. No, no, no. I don't have to, I have two young children. I have a mortgage. I, I don't have that kind of income. You do. No, no. I think you make more than our next guest. That, That's uh, a problem. You have some nerve. First of all, get out of our wallets. I'm not in your wallet. It's just speculation. Oh, no, no. You, you, I, I... He clears our next guest. No, I don't. So? Let's ask him. No, but I think he comes from institutional money. Great Look at point. His name. That I can't get oh. into. Trevarius Wingo the Third. Yeah, I mean, really, the, you, you're not born poor <laughs> with you, that wait, name. It, it was your first name Trevarius or Tredavian? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's Hal. <laughs> Hal Tredavian right. Wingo That's the right. Third. How was Hawaii, Trey? Well, it was wonderful, Michael. And by the way, you could totally go. So, did, well, didn't you go to Italy last summer? I'm just checking, right? It wasn't last summer. It was two summers ago? Two summers ago, I, I, yes, I believe. But it was a birthday gift for my wife. There you go. So she gave you a nice birthday gift. So not no, 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 no. I gave her a birthday gift. gift. The only not gift for me would stay give with my... wife that kind of gift, I'm telling you. Yeah, but the pictures you sent out, you had the entire Wingo clan. I mean, you went to, like, Forever 23 and found every relative you had and, and flew them out to Hawaii. Uh, we, my mom and dad came for, like, four days. That was it. Uh, that, see, that's institutional money when you go to Hawaii for just four days. Wow. Well, that's that's my, that's my dad and mom being in their 80s and closer to the coast, and they're like, yeah, what the heck, why not? I well, love we were it. happy to have them. Did you we have a good time? Them. Michael, it's hard not to. It I've never been there. I, it, well, listen, I, I, people always ask me, why do you go back every year? Then they go once, like Field Yates did this year, and they never ask that question again. So I, I just... Field, I can tell you something. Enough. Field Yates is too young to even deserve a Hawaii vacation. <laughs> I wasn't Field Yates, by the way. It was R.J. Santillo. And, and the same person. How old is Field? 26? I think he's just now allowed to see R-rated movies. Yeah, come nice. on. He needs to wait another 10 years before he deserves I still haven't taken my Hawaii trip. I'm 40. I'm hoping to get yeah, there. Well, let's go. Get a, and listen, you can, you can literally take a direct shot from New York to Honolulu and then take a, a puddle jumper or a Hawaiian Airlines flight to any other island. And it's a seven-minute flight. So what are you waiting for? Oh, so how great. long is the, the flight from New York to uh, Honolulu? I think it's like 11 hours. I can't do that. Yes, you can. I can't. I can't stand flying. So why would I be in a hurtling well, tin you, can? You have a you have a tough job for someone who doesn't like flying. That's the considering that's all only. You guys do. It's the only part of my job I don't like. I don't like to wow. fly. Because, but 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 see, I mean, I, I'm, I, listen. I, I don't know how it works, but your frequent flyer miles must be through the roof. No, they don't. I, I don't even. I don't even. I don't even belong to frequent flyer clubs because I don't want to fly in my free time. All right, can I tell you something? That you might as well just take money and burn it. Okay. I mean, literally. Wait, hold on, hold on. Not... Trey, we've never covered this before. Michael, you refuse to belong to any... I, I, I belong to one frequent flyer club, and that's American Airlines. I, I just don't have the time. I, I, you, you have the time, and you have the money. Let's not be, let's be clear about that. But not Wingo money. Anyway, yeah. so you obviously were following sports while you were there, right? And you were playing a lot of, of golf, from what I could tell. Can confirm both of those things were true. <laughs> <laughs> What's your take on the Astro situation? Are the players angry at the wrong person? Shouldn't they be angry at their own union? Um, I, I guess, but, I mean, like, my thing is, and it's funny, I, I, on the way back I watched the uh, Billy Corbin uh, pseudo-documentary called Screwball. Oh, it's supposed to be great. Channel. Yeah. It's phenomenal. It's, it's really, really well done. And, and I, I guess I, I'm still, I understand they're, they're upset with Manfred for two reasons. Number one, uh, the players, like we had Joe Girardi on this morning, okay? And Joe Girardi summed it up. He doesn't think, as you alluded to earlier, Michael, in your infinite wisdom on our time together on a Wednesday on the Michael Clay show, that he doesn't think there's still any deterrent for players to stop doing it. Because uh, Lunau's gone, A.J. Hinch is gone, Alex Cora is gone, Carlos Beltran is gone, but the Bregmans and the Altubates and the oh. Carlos Correa holier-than-thou approach about telling people to get their facts straight, are you kidding me? They're still playing. They still have a championship, and they have a chance to compete for another one this year. It still feels like the Lethal Weapon 2 plot, right? Go Diplomatic ahead. immunity. I could, just yeah. go, I could do whatever I want to do because my union's so strong that nobody can touch me. And you know what? The, yeah. the, the football players should pay attention to this. Because they don't have that, right? No yeah. other union in sports has that. The Players Association in baseball has it because of how strong they've been, how unified they've been. They canceled a World Series back in 1994 because of that unity. And no, but nobody else has it. But I do think there's something wrong with strong union translating into basically diplomatic immunity. No, I, I agree with you. And, and uh, the reason why I brought up Screwball, the biogenesis thing, 
is because people are like, oh, no, it will take forever, it will be ugly, and, you know, they'll probably, uh, they'll probably win the appeal anyway. And the point being, so what? Because if let's say Rob Manfred said, look, I know I'm going to lose this. I know at the end of the day, but I have to stand up for something. I have to do something so the players understand you can't do this. You know who would take the L if even if the appeal was overturned? The union. It would be the players. Right. The players union. I mean, by basically throwing up your hands and going, ah, what are you going to do? You know, it, to me, that's the worst thing he could have done. Just and take then, the L. And then of all things, to refer to the – the World Series, the Commissioner's Trophy, as a piece of metal. You can say whatever well, you want about I mean, NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman. You can say whatever you want about NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell. I guarantee to you neither one of those commissioners would ever say about the Lombardi Trophy or the Stanley Cup. That's ah, just a beat-up cup or a shiny piece of silver. They would yeah. never say that. Well, the they one would thing he, never say that. The one thing he's done now is made that trophy presentation after the World Series must watch. Because you imagine yeah. the reaction he's going to get when he hands that piece of metal to whoever uh, wins the World Series? Yeah, especially if, especially with Justin Turner, what he had to say about it. Oh, that's unreal. Now, but what do you, is anything you think going to come out, uh, is it significant to you, Trey, that LeBron chimed in? It, it is. By the way, the funniest line in the history of tweets, as far as I'm concerned, was in LeBron's response where he said, I don't play baseball, and then he added, but I am in sports. Hey, breaking news. LeBron yeah, I know. I sports. thought the same like, thing. And also, like, the idea that? the idea that LeBron needs to qualify having a voice. Yeah. Like, you know, no, yeah. LeBron, you're allowed to weigh in here, bud. Yeah, it's just funny. I am in sports. It's going to go down as my favorite line in the history of Twitter, no matter what happens. He in is in sports. Years. Okay, I knew I knew him from somewhere. See, but I, says, li I like that. That's where I know him from. I yeah. like that. Oh, he's guy. not so arrogant as to make you, uh, that you should know who he is. He's reintroducing himself, Trey. He's a big man. On, on a nightly basis, absolutely. He needs to work on his uh, hashtag game, though. Can we agree on that? Oh, 100%. It, yes, it was, it was ridiculous. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I do think that there is the possibility that, if, I mean, because, like, this is just, everybody continues to throw an accelerant on an already raging bonfire, whether it's. You know, Nick Markakis, who Dusty Baker tried to dis dismiss him by saying, well, he never says anything. Yes, Dusty, that's the point. Even he, Nick Markakis, who never says anything, is saying your players deserve a beating. I was yesterday many old, many days old, when I learned what Mike Trout's voice sounded like. I know, Mike Trout exactly. Mike actually said something, you know? I mean, this is how egregious <laughs> the players yeah. think it is. And I, I'm, I'm holding out hope on some level that there will be a uh, sort of a recycling. Well, what what can we do? Because I don't take, I don't know what the the constitution of baseball says and the and all this kind of stuff. Could we? I mean, the the the, the champion Cleveland soccer banned Manchester City for two seasons for uh, illegalities in terms of financial fair play. I mean, can we ban them going forward? I mean, there there needs to be, in my uh, my opinion, and I agree with what Joe said. That and I don't think he really wanted to say it. It just came out. That, you know, there is still no deterrent for players well, in all of this. Well, I there mean, is none. the easy, I think the easy fix here, the, the, the one thing that he has in his toolbox, though, Trey, take away 2017. So what if it's unprecedented? Make a precedent. Yeah. Take it away. That's not that hard. They should not be allowed to fly that flag, and they should not be allowed to call themselves world champions. I think that that would be a big deterrent. Uh, I agree, and I, I bring up Adam Silver in this because basically we all know commissioners are not the the grandfatherly Gandalfs of their sport, right? Oh, they're just to the betterment of everything. All commissioners are hired by the owners and fired by the owners. Well, what Donald Sterling did when he owned the Clippers was so egregious that Adam Silver essentially fired one of his bosses in, in, how, in removing yeah. Donald Sterling. And he was going to do whatever it took to make sure that happened. And all the other owners said, you know what? We agree. This has to happen, and it has to happen now. Now, you could have made the argument they knew what he was a long time ago, and they could have done it then. But eventually, because it was so egregious and so offensive to so many people, that the, Adam Silver did the most unprecedented thing. And if he could fire one of his owners, I think that Rob Manfred, in continuing to see the incredible backlash, which I don't think is slowing down anytime soon, can... can Take another unprecedented step to your words, 
I think. And so what? If it, like, if it doesn't work and there's a fight and he loses, at least he said, I'm drawing a line and I'm standing for something. The and one, I think the, that's what people are missing. The one thing I don't like that's being suggested, I think our, our friend Buster only also suggested, you know, uh, he might not have the power to take it with the championship. I think he does, but he says he should put an asterisk. To me, that's hollow. I, because already yeah. they have a mental asterisk. We all know that they cheated in 2017. Right. But we're trying to assure that in uh, the 22nd century, if there's still baseball and Joe Buck the Ninth is doing the World Series, that the bottom <laughs> line is that they're going to know that there was no 2017 title. Yeah, I, I agree. Just like there was no 94 World Series. Right. You know? And, and I, I, do, I do believe that they're still – I don't think this thing is – and I may be way out on a limb here, but it just feels like this thing is not – yet completely written in my opinion i don't think anybody really knew how this was going to play out until all the players showed up i mean the first guy who sort of alluded to this was indians pitcher mike clevenger who in the most uh, clevenger way did this interview while getting another tattoo at a tattoo parlor and talked about some of the things that everyone else has now been saying and i'm telling you and i mean listen we're, we're, nobody, I, I don't believe in retaliation by being hit by a pitch, you know, I, that, especially if you're going head hunting. That's, that's not something that I think is a good idea, and I think trying to crack down on that is fine. But when Dusty Baker has to say to Major League Baseball, hey, man, you better be protective of my players, and then if that's what happens in light of everything else that they got away with, I mean, that's just going to make things even worse. It's just it's just become such a twisted cycle of mess right now that I think something else needs to happen. You know, I just thought about this a little while ago when Michael uh, had brought up uh, the 2018 Red Sox. We're still waiting for the discipline for that team and the investigation yep. to be complete there. And I think it would be unfair if they get hit harder just because of the timing of it, right? I mean, they have to be fair right. about this. But at the same time, I was thinking about taking the title away, which I'm all for. But let's say they take the title away from the Astros in 2017. They do the investigation on the Red Sox, find out there was impropriety, but it's not as bad as what the Astros right. did. Can you yeah. then say we're going to let the Red Sox keep the title in 2018 because it didn't, it didn't cross this imaginary line of demarcation? I think that's where it kind of gets a little dicey, right? Like, how would it look yeah. if the Astros lose it, but then for some reason because the Red Sox did less, they don't lose their title? Yeah, and that's interesting because I don't know to what extent they have the um, the information that they had with the Astros. I mean, you know, remember, uh, A.J. Hinch had to address it uh, last postseason, you know, where they said, I'm glad you asked about this because this is all ridiculous. I mean, come on. And then, of course, all of it turned out to be true. Literally all of it turned out to be true. Uh, so I don't know what kind of information they have uh, in terms of what the Red Sox, believe, they believe they did or didn't do, but it was bad enough. Uh, for the Red Sox themselves to understand that, yeah, there was a line that crossed. They got rid of a, a very successful manager. You know what I mean? And the other thing that people keep talking about is, oh, give me a break. Everybody does it. You're, you're right. Everybody does it. But nobody does it the way, at this point at least, and potentially the Red Sox as well, the Astros took it to that level with technology. Right. When there was a specific memo uh, that I went out and said, you cannot do this or you will be held accountable. And the Astros basically said, yeah, hold my beer. I, I, keep, I keep hearing everybody does it. Well, then prove it. You know, I, I'm not going right. to sit here and, and well, besmirch everybody does it. That's why with the players speaking out the way they are. Mm. I mean, would they be speaking out to this extent if they were doing something that's even close to what the Astros are doing? I don't think so. No, they I mean, can't be that yeah, like, maniacal. Uh, I, I agree. And, you know, the, tipping pitches, that's one thing. And if you can pick up signs, that's fine. But to go through this elaborate system with the video replay and all the technology that, again, was specifically pointed in a memo from Major League Baseball that says you cannot do this. And they went ahead and did it anyway. I think that that's where the egregiousness lies in with so many people and so many players. Can I do something outrageous? Sure. Sure. Can I, can I mention something in pro sports not related to the Astros cheating? Sure. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on Wilder Fury 2 this weekend? Are you excited? Are you making plans to do it? By the way, it's a huge company initiative. I'll let you go ahead. Yes. No, I'm really excited about that because, I mean, like, boxing is, is fine, but we all want – I mean, it, it just shows you how things have changed, right? At, at, at one time, the three greatest sports titles you could have in America would be the world's fastest man, the heavyweight champ, and the home run king, right? For, for decades, those were the three things. And we all love heavyweights. I mean, we all say we like fighting, we like boxing and all that kind of stuff, but it's always best when you have heavyweights go at it. And these two guys are not only heavyweights – they're punchers. You know what I mean? These guys are going to be out there throwing 
haymakers. I, I think well, is Wilder the only uh, is is Fury the only guy that Wilder has not knocked out in a win? Is that is that like, whether by KO or TKO? I, I think that's correct. That right? could that could be correct. I didn't know if he'd had a knockout yeah. or TKO in every single fight. George Foreman is yeah. picking um, Fury to win. Yeah, you know it's interesting. He said if you he's know, not Fury knocked out in four in the first four rounds, he said he's got to stay away with his his length. He said if he's knocked right. out in the first four rounds, he will win on points. Yeah, it's 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 to me. I am very excited about this because this is what you live for. You I mean Deontay Wilder has said, you know, he had some really aggressive goals in his in his boxing career, extremely violent ones. And Fury is a guy who's had his own sort of personal blemishes and hiccups along the way, but he's sort of been a. A, a retribution and, and a, a sort of a rebuilding case. And, you know, he made a really interesting point with Max Kellerman the other day. He's like, look, the last time I, I played him, I had come in, come, or fought him, I'd be coming off a two-and-a-half years hiatus, and I only had six months of training going into that fight, and it ended up being a draw. And this time I've gone through two years of, 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 of constant training in five fights. The, I'm the best Tyson Fury I've ever been right now. And no one has ever accused either one of these guys of being an artistic boxer. They are there to throw the big punches. And that's the draw of heavyweights in general. We want to see the hammer thrown. Well, and, and I, I, I'll say this. I, I think Fury is an artist. and It's a different, unique thing than we've ever seen before. When I first saw him against Klitschko years ago, I really yep. did not think he was special. And as the years have right. gone on, his ability to be a defensive fighter is truly impressive. And frankly, all I really want... I just hope, for the sake of boxing, that Saturday night feels like a moment. We finally feel right. like everyone's dialed in. Like, the people we know right. in sports who are fans are paying attention. And frankly, if it's not going to happen with these two heavyweights on a joint pay-per-view between Fox and ESPN, then when is it right. going to happen? That's a great point. I mean, like, the, the last big fight in terms of that captivated our attention from a boxing perspective was an MMA guy against a defensive Ex fighter. Exactly. Really not it was a out. joke. You know what I mean? I'd yeah, it was a joke. Anybody who thought that Conor McGregor had a chance was absolutely kidding himself. He was going to, I mean, Floyd Mayweather was going to lose for the first time as a professional against a guy who's not actually a professional boxer. That was never going to happen. It was never going to happen. All right, before we let you go, I made this point yesterday, and I think the guys agreed with me as well. We spoke to Ernie Accorsi at the Eli Manning retirement event, and Accorsi right. said that John Elway would have played for the Colts if they didn't trade him. He said, and Eli would have played for the Chargers if they didn't trade him. So I don't know if Joe Burrow is going to say, I don't want to play for the Bengals, but there's no way if I'm the Bengals, and I think that this is the guy, that I would ever trade him. Either you play for us or you don't ever play. Your thoughts? Um, I, I don't know where Joe Burrow stands on this. Right. But I think Joe Burrow is, is being smart. The, the words that he used that sort of got this thing going was an, it was an interview with the Fort Worth Star-Telegram. And I don't know what the question was. I just saw the answer from him, which was, I do have leverage, and so do the Bengals. They have their process. But he doesn't have, have leverage. Well, he does. Well, all right, I don't want to ever play again. That's his leverage. Yeah. Is that what he wants? Right. No, but I think he wants to use the threat of that much in the same way uh, Elway and Eli did. And, and Ernie can say that, hey, he would have played. That's fine, but if they really felt that way, they probably would have kept both of those things and not tried to make the move and deal well, with that. He said that both. He said he told the Colts owners, "Do not trade this guy. He's not a good baseball player. That's his only leverage. He'll never play for the Yankees." And they traded him out from under him. And he said, "I know for a fact that Eli would have played for the Chargers." He put the hat on. Right, but Kelly Stoffer uh, is the, is the is the test case right here. He right. He uh, I can't remember what year it was. Eighty three, maybe eighty four. Uh, that he basically sat out of here and went back into the draft for the second year. So it's not like you would never play again. It's just you'd have to wait another year before you could play. But then the Bengals would still get the number one pick. They don't lose the pick, right? Well, I, I believe that's no, how it works. It, uh, I'm not sure about that because it depends on. Then it would depend on next year's record. You know what I mean? Mm, I, I think they get awarded that pick if they don't if they don't make if they don't sign their selection. I believe I'd have to check it out. I, I, I'll have to check that out. I'm not sure, but that was certainly not the case for Kelly Stoffer when that happened because I believe it was a different team that drafted him. I, I'd have to go back and check, but he really did set out the year. Hmm. I mean that that's really taking a stand for your. I mean, essentially his hometown team. I know they're not good, yeah. but they're not as bad as some teams that are thought of as good teams. I mean, they have made the playoffs bad, yeah. four times in eight years, right? Right. Yes, they have. My, my thing with the Bengals, and, and, you know, some people said, oh, you know, Bengal fans should be pissed. No, man, Bengal fans should be pissed at the Bengals. They shouldn't be pissed at Joe Burrow. They should be pissed at the franchise for making people think this way. To me, that, that's where the anger should lie. Well, we're so glad that you're back on the mainland and talking to us yeah. again. 
It's good to hear Listen, your voice. Again. I was, I, I was, I was. If you guys had dialed me up on Hawaiian time, I would have been happy to talk with you. Guys. But that's not right. You're enjoying yourself. You, you, you're lathering up with you know all kind of exotic oils. You don't need to be on the phone. And we don't even know what Hawaii then, time is. I think they say it's essential it's, it's, oils. It's five. It's five hours. Essential oils are always important. Do you have a? Do you have? Uh, a, but, do you have an unbelievable tan right now? Uh, well, yeah. It's. I have. I have a healthy glow. Let's oh, that's that great. Look at you. But but I uh, but see but say we do want to do that. And I was enjoying myself. That that gives the impression that I don't enjoy our conversations, which I enjoy them very much. But not as much as essential oils. No, but put essential oils together on a beach with our time together. Then we've really got something. Wow. You know that is special. You know, next time you're in Hawaii, give us a give us a buzz. As done, uh, as El, uh, Jose Altuve says. Hey, hey. too soon. What I did there, too soon. Scott. Not enough Never information. Never too soon. All right, Trey, welcome back. Thanks. That's that's a problem. Thanks, guys. <laughs>